Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new session. Uh, all right, uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, uh, Sid, is it okay if you can please lead us? Sure, Pastor. Thank you. Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you for this day, the new day you have given us, Lord. Lord, as we are going to learn from your Pastor Paul, Lord, about your word, Lord, whatever he's going to teach us, Lord, Lord, it should minister us, Lord, and it should create create a great, great impact in our lives, Lord. It should be not just listening or learning, Lord, but it should be used effectively for your kingdom expansion in the days to come, Lord. Lord, we don't do anything for our will, but your Lord, your will be done in our lives, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for all the blessings you have given us, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sid. All right. So uh, today will be our last session, right? We've covered a lot of content from the beginning of this uh, semester, from the course. We learned about covenants. We learned about all the covenants that God has established for us, right? Uh, and it's so wonderful that we are part of this covenant. Then two, the section two, we looked at the cross and how the cross was a place of victory, place of triumph. And, and we learned about how uh, the cross is the center for the entire humankind, meaning this is the only place in the world where uh, we can find forgiveness, we can find love, we can find hope. And we looked at the power of the cross and what, what Jesus accomplished on the cross, right? And it's so important, um, like you and I as believers, to, uh, to remember that the cross is not just an event that happened or the cross is not just something we wear around our you know, necks and or a, a, a piece of jewelry. No, the cross has has destroyed the power of the devil. He had destroyed the works of the enemy, right? And so now, as believers, as part of His children, we live a victorious life, right? We studied about what uh, Jesus did for us on the cross. So then we also moved into the blood, the section three on the blood. And last week, we studied about how the blood of Jesus redeems us, right? He, uh, the blood has redeemed us from the power of sin, redeemed us from Satan's work, redeemed us from this present evil age, and redeemed us from the curse of the law. Remember, in the Old Testament, the law was there. Uh, but why was it said that it was a curse? Because none of us could keep the law, right? It was, it was, the law could not satisfy us. There was need, there was something more that was needed. And, uh, and the blood of Jesus Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. But not only that, the blood of Jesus Christ redeemed us into something as well. That is what he, he, he put us into a higher kingdom, a right standing with God. And now you and I, are like sons and daughters in the in the kingdom of God. We are kings and priests in God's kingdom. Then very important last week, we saw uh, and we studied about uh, the Lord's table, right? Uh, Paul was writing to the Corinthians and he says to them, uh, you know, the Lord's table needs to be celebrated in an honorable way. Why? Because, uh, you know, when we look at it, the Corinthians were, you know, drinking and eating of the Lord's table as if it was food and, you know, a, a, a time of uh, enjoyment or a time of fellowship, uh, meaning they were just having it at their own time, at their own will. There was no reverence for God. So Paul had to bring correction to them. He exhorted them. He uh, rebuked them. And he said, don't you have your own homes to eat and drink? That You despise the Lord's table. Then Paul also tells them that, the reason why some of them were ill and falling sick uh, within the church in Corinth was because they were partaking in the Lord's table in an unworthy manner. Right? There was disorder in the church. Now, this is a very important lesson that we must learn. Right? The church in Corinth were all believers flowing in the gifts of the Spirit, very matured in the, in, in the gifts of the Spirit. Right? They were already flowing in prophetic, word of knowledge, gifts of healing, all of that was there. But in this area, they were lacking. Paul also writes and he says, there's division among you. One says, I follow Paul. One says, I follow Apollos. One says, I follow Cephas. So what is the main thing that we can understand from here? Just because 
we have we are flowing the gifts of the spirit or just because we are anointed of god does not mean that you know we can do whatever we want to do revelation in one area does not mean we have revelation in all areas right that's why jesus teaches us and he says we are to we are changing from glory to glory from strength to strength right so uh, every area of our life uh, we must be we must apply it in in in, order, in line with the word of god then we also looked at the purpose and the power of the lord's table right the lord's table was a place where uh, you know the lord himself said uh, do this in remembrance of me uh, all our sins were paid the power of sin was broken now when we partake of the bread and the body we are partaking in his death his burial his resurrection right uh, and so we looked at all that so uh, we will just uh, we just have another chapter more to complete so we should complete this in another uh, 20 minutes and then our portions will be completed uh, so what we also looked at what the blood of jesus does for us uh last last class we looked at it cleanses us from all cleanses us from all sin we are sanctified we are justified by the blood of jesus uh we we are uh, uh we have boldness to enter the presence of god our sins are washed away we are purchased of god we are part of the blood covenant and there's so much that the blood of jesus does for us right we always say you know we cover this house we cover our children we cover our family uh by the blood of jesus so so we we'll go to the chapter 30 and we'll just look at a few points and uh, we'll bring this entire course to a close right walking in the power of, of the blood right now we know that there's power in the blood of jesus but how do we walk in that power right experiencing the power of the blood of jesus uh john chapter 6 53 to 57 yes sid uh, is it okay if you can read that for us john chapter 6 53 to 57 john 6 53 to 57 john chapter 6 verses 53 Jesus said to them I tell you the truth unless you eat the flesh of man flesh the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day for my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink what whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and i in him just as the living father sent me and i live because of the father so the one who feeds on me will live because of me amen thank you said right so again jesus is reminding his disciples and he's saying eat and drink of this uh by faith we embrace the power of the blood of jesus right when we partake in the lord's table by faith we are embracing uh, the power in god's blood in the blood of jesus that was shed for us now let's look at a few points on how you and i can experience the power of the blood of jesus right now jesus is saying partake of this now there's a reason now jesus is not saying okay you have to partake of this so that you know uh, you can have a longer service or you know just so that to fill in time uh, for a sunday service no uh jesus is saying this because he's he's exhorting he's encouraging his children the disciples to to partake of this because there is power in his blood now he's talking about what he is going to do ahead right so how must we uh you know well uh, b or how must we walk uh, in experiencing the power of the blood of jesus first one come into obedience right when we come into obedience of god uh, god's word obedience to god's will obedience to god's promises then what is happening is we are going to experience the power of the blood of jesus in our lives right uh, so for example we are we are living uh, uh you know we are obeying the lord we are living 
uh, in a way that is pleasing to God. We are obedient to his word. Uh, and then when we are walking in this way and then the enemy comes to attack us, we can use the power, the blood of Jesus. Right? And the blood of Jesus will protect us and cover us. Secondly, believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. Now, many people will come and say to us, oh, the blood of Jesus is not, you know, it's not real. The cross is, you know, uh, it was just a good man who died and all of that. But you and I must believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. Can the blood of Jesus cleanse us from all unrighteousness? Yes. Can the blood of Jesus protect us from sin? Yes. Can the blood of Jesus protect our family, protect our homes? Yes. Can the blood of Jesus protect us from every demonic activity? Yes. Now, is there a, is there a, you know, uh, like a chart or is there a paper that says that, okay, this is what it'll do? No. But we must believe. Right? We must believe it. We must trust in the power of the blood of Jesus. You know, we sing wonderful songs. You know, we have Good Friday coming up as well. Why do we celebrate it? Why do we remember it? Because it is a powerful, powerful declaration. We believe in what the Lord Jesus did. We believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. Right? Declare, third point, declare what the blood of Jesus has done for you. I'll read Revelations chapter 12 and verse 11. Yes, one of us can read actually. Uh, Revelations chapter 12 and verse 11. Revelation, yes. Revelations. Revelations chapter 12 and verses 11. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much so as to shrink from death. Amen. Thank you, Sid. They overcame him. The him there is they overcame the enemy, the devil. How? By the blood of the Lamb. And the word of our testimony. Isn't that powerful? You and I can overcome the works of the devil by the blood of the Lamb. So what, what can we pray? Lord, we cover this house. We cover our family with the blood of Jesus. No weapon fashioned against us will prosper. That's wonderful. But we can also pray and say, I cover my inner person. I cover my mind with the blood of Jesus. I cover my inner person, my soul, by the blood of Jesus, that no work of the enemy can enter in. No evil thoughts of the enemy can enter in. And so we declare what the blood of Jesus has done for us. Our testimony to what the blood of Jesus has done for us is a weapon against the enemy, right? And this weapon overpowers the enemy. Let's picture this. If you're going through some kind of uh, difficult season or a sickness or a disease or an impossible situation, our testimony to what the blood of Jesus can do for us is a weapon against the enemy. You know, we can start. We we have studied about binding and loosing. We always pray, right? I bind you in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus. Right now, when we declare what Je the blood of Jesus has done for us, the blood of Jesus is is waiting to do its work. Because it's like this: the Lord Jesus is in heaven, and we, as His children, are praying, and we're saying, God. This is a difficult season. I'm going through. The enemy is attacking me. What do I do? But I trust in you. I have hope in you. I know you're going to help me. And immediately during that time, the power of God flows in us. God is waiting. The book of Isaiah says he's waiting for him to perform his great works. He's just waiting for those who trust in him. right? To, and, and he will perform his good works, his miraculous works. Remember, the book of Isaiah also says, uh, you know, every word that comes out of him shall not return back void. So declare what the blood of Jesus has done for you. 
Declare it over your lives. Declare it over your families. Declare it, declare it over your children as well. Finally, the last point. This, sorry, uh, welcome the work of the Holy Spirit. One John chapter five, verses four to eight. One John five verses four to eight. Yes, could one of us please read that? One John chapter five verses four to eight. One John five verses four to eight. First uh, John chapter five verse four to eight. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that <clears throat> that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is uh, who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three are agree as one. Amen. Thank you, Anita. Right. So we welcome the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, John, uh, in one John, he's 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 writing to the believers and he's telling them that the victory that has overcome the world is our faith, right? And as God's children, when we speak of the blood of Jesus, we are pointing to the finished work of the cross. And we are saying the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross is made available for you and me. It's made available. And we are pointing to the blood that what Jesus accomplished on the cross for us. So these four points are important. Come into obedience. Believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. Declare what the blood of Jesus has done for you. Welcome the work of the Holy Spirit, right? So with this, we have completed our portions. Uh, I tried to complete it last week, but we could not. Uh, but we have finished the entire portions of uh, covenants, the cross, and the blood. Uh, does any of you have any questions? Uh, any of you have any thoughts? Uh, your learnings? You want to share something? Uh, any questions? Uh, has this been a, I hope this has been a good learning for you. I know that a lot of this material, you know, we may have heard sermons, we may have, uh, you know, read it many times, uh, but it's very good to reiterate uh, into our spirit, right? Remember what Jesus has done for us and, uh, uh, you know, keep keep walking in these, right? Walking in the covenants of God, walking uh, in the power of His blood, power of His uh, uh, power of the cross upon our lives, and uh, I'm sure the Lord will empower and enable each one of us, right? Yes. Any questions? Any thoughts? No questions. Okay. All right. So. Uh, we will we have completed this portions um and then what we will do is we'll i will post a, a, a final assessment up on the uh, classwork tab on the assignment and then you can uh, fill in your assignments and uh, send it back as well so uh, all right if there are no questions we can bring this uh, course to a close uh maybe one of us could please pray and close and bless each of our students. I just want to, uh, since a lot of students haven't been able to join today, please, uh, if you have a WhatsApp group or if there's a way that you can connect to them and let them know that the portions are completed. I will also put an announcement on the stream so that people are aware, the students are aware. All right, uh, anybody, Lubega, would you like to close uh, this time in prayer? Sure, Pastor. Go ahead. 
Father in heaven, we thank you for this lesson, Lord, for this entire course, Lord, for the life of the pastor, for the life of my colleagues who have walked through since January to now, Lord. So, Lord, as we've come to a cross, we pray that you bless us. You send your Holy Spirit to remind us as we are going to be doing our final assessment. Let us not get marks. Let us not get marks that are shameful, Lord. Let us be reminded and be able to do it and get marks that are of great honor in your kingdom. Lord, let us also do the implementation part because, Lord, once we understand and, and we learn and we don't not implement, Lord, our learning will be in vain. We do pray that we meet the pastor, maybe in the next semester or any other pastor in the next life ahead. We do pray and believe that everything is going to come to pass not because of our power, but because of your will, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, we do pray and say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Lubega. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I had a blessed time teaching this course. Uh, have a great uh, week, great month ahead. All the best for your final assessments. And God bless you all. Uh, have a great week. God bless.